Did it work that time? Yes. So turn off, turn back on, log back on. Is a thing. Set and download that one. Yeah, but then you could tell which task you wanted it to <laughs> close and reopen. But yeah. But you did get that. I got it. Okay. Yep. And it downloaded. Cool. Yeah. It's not staying there, but it's pretty much. So when I looked at these appointments the other day, none of them had bios. Now today they do. Are they late going on, or did they just not? The appointments, <laughs> the reappointments. They shouldn't have. Yeah. The first time I looked at them, which was like last well, Thursday or Friday, none of them showed up. So I was kind of like, why don't we have bios? Oh, but are these even bios? No, they're, they're not bios. That's yeah. okay. For the reappointments, we've never done bios. We just do it for the initial first appointment, but I can change yeah. that if you okay. want for the training. That was just a me. I ask. Yeah, usually when they're appointed for the first time, we'll ask them to submit a bio. Okay. And then the reappointments. We don't normally. We don't normally. Yeah. We can do. Either. Okay. Would like to welcome everyone today and call for order the study session study meeting of the West Valley City Council. It is June 20th, 2023, and it is 4.30 p.m. We will be joined by all members of the council today. We have Councilman Fitziamanu and Councilman Harmon on remote. And at the table, we have Councilman Norfeld, Councilman Christensen, Councilman Whetstone, Councilman Poon, and myself. We are also joined by Nicole Cotter, Fadl, our assistant city manager, and Nicole Hammock, our city recorder. We will now go to our minutes of June 13th, 2023, and I will turn it to the council for a discussion or a motion on those minutes. For approval of the minutes of uh, June 13th, 2023. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Hi. Thank you. Um, we'll now go to review of our regular meeting tonight and the special building authority meeting. And I'll turn it to Ms. Coddle. Do we have any changes or no, ma'am? No changes. Any questions from the council on either of our later meetings? Okay, seeing none, well, we have a proclamation tonight. And is anyone reading it or is it just we're announcing we have a proclamation? I mean, not tonight, next week. Whatever the council would like. This is one that's um, internal. It's from our Parks and Rec Department that okay. requested it. That we can do later. Right. Is there anyone that would like to read the proclamation recognizing July 2023 as Parks and Recreation Month? Okay, thank you, Don. Okay, we'll have Mr. Our Councilman Christensen read that for us next week. Now I'll go to our public hearing and I'll turn the time over to Steve Pastrick. 
This is our second review of application GP1-2023. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, I actually don't have any new information from last week, so I'm happy to answer any questions, but no changes to the proposal. All right, any questions from the council? I had uh, asked, um, just looking at the planning committee minutes, there was a claim that there's a lot of high use um, homeless activity within that uh, area where they're planning to fill in and fill up. So I just wanted confirmation to make sure that that was the case or if it's being overstated or. And this is kind of those wet hat, wetlands to the east, correct? Right. Okay. Mayor Councilman Whitstone asked that on email and I'm prepared to answer. Okay. That's a thank you. So I, I personally am aware of this and also verified with our COP officers that um, <laughs> deal with it in the last two or three or four weeks, months. Um, so in particular, when the um, there's a particular market over there called Valley Market, when the Valley Market was open in that area, um, we saw a significant amount of that kind of activity in the wetland. And of course, our officers were routinely um, there to, to work on that. Once that facility moved along, um, we saw a decrease. However, what we, what we see now is um, on our COP morning and evening, just checks about the area in particular close to the river. We do see folks um, there routinely. They are pretty aware that in West Valley, we, we're, we're not a camping city and we don't allow those kinds of activities. So they move along pretty quickly. But I would say that, um, yes, it's true that that area is frequented by the um, homeless population that comes across the, the river. We'll probably see a, a little bit of an increase in that as well as the park next to the homeless shelter in South Salt Lake becomes the permanent home of the aviary as well. So it is definitely a concern. Our officers, as you know, work really hard to stay on top of that. So they're they're over there and check that area out pretty well, but they do some people there. That's helpful. I'm, I drove by last week and it, I didn't see anything obviously it's during the day and it looked like a nice area that I hate to see that go for development. We don't have a lot of green areas. Our folks can definitely keep a keep a handle on it and they have demonstrated that, but it is a it is an attractive. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Pastrick? Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll now go to our resolutions. 23-86, the purchase of golf course maintenance equipment. And it looks like Ms. Cobble will take care of that one. Yeah, so I am Johnny on the spot today. Nancy had a family emergency and is um, unavailable for this. But as you're aware, as a council of this, List was approved um, by you already once with the approval of the resolution 2367 back on the 6th of June, which is the overall list of um, uh, CIP items. Um, and specifically, so as we go down the list here, all of this equipment is from Turf Equipment, an irrigation company. That is a state contract provider, which means it's bid through the state. So we, we use that amount and we're authorized to do that. Um, this, I can walk through if you'd like the different uses for the, the pieces of equipment. I did buff up my knowledge of that. So I'm happy to share that with you if you'd like, or if there aren't any questions, I'll spare you that um, delight. It's up to you as council. All right, any questions from the council about the different pieces of equipment or any other questions for this item? Just a in general question, I guess. I guess the total price tag was kind of a big pill to swallow. And I'm wondering if there was alternatives, maybe even I'll use the dreaded lease uh, word, or it, can some of the equipment be used a little longer? Just, it was a pretty dire 
Yep. Great, great question. So, so we have as a staff, as you know, over the years, and as we talked about this before, brought to you the different alternatives. Leasing is one of the alternatives, of course, and we can, we could do that for sure. All of the pieces that are on here, they are in very dire condition. So continuing to use them um, is, is not really an option um, from that perspective, but, but yes, um, I think that, that the other types of financing options obviously can be um, addressed and happy to happy to do that if that's the council's desire we can bring that back to you these are pieces of equipment that um, are pretty essential to the functioning of the golf course and um, like I said as as a list was included in that six six um, approval as well so if that's helpful but with that approval it was made known that everything wouldn't just be automatically approved that's right? right yep so okay. it still comes back just like this example right we will uh, everything on that list will come back before you in just this format right. and you can you can yep do with it what you will if it does. yes yeah um just a quick question sand throw 3040 without the blade okay Assuming the sand pro 3040 is what keeps the sand traps so that I can get out of them <laughs> when I'm golfing, uh -huh. which is most of the time. Uh -huh. But if it doesn't have the blade, how does it do that? So it's a rake and they, it rakes through the sand. Okay. The blade is an additional attachment okay. that would provide a different service and than what we need it for. Yes, so sir. That That's right. So do we have? We needed a spare blade hanging around from the old sand pros. We have the capability, yep, to, to handle that. Parks and is not in his head right behind your nod. Yep. <laughs> well, Jason has no faith in my in my understanding of these machines. I'm glad he's saying yes behind my behind my back there. That's excellent. I did do my study. <laughs> but yes, we do have Jason here as well. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I guess I'm in favor of just purchasing them outright instead of a lease, <clears throat> not having that one or 2% lease cost where we're not making that on the interest we have on, on this money put aside for these items. So I would still rather just purchase them and then lease them. Um, there's different equipment on here, probably different um, life. Times do we know like what the average would be on each? Yeah, the average the at well, and that's a great question. So if you use the average of the ones we used before, you asked the great question of how, how long can we make these go? I will submit to you that we made the last round go well past the average life that that lifespan that they would have. So each one of these is different. If you'd like me to provide the lifespan for each one of these, like in a follow up email, I can do that. But they are all very different depending on the type of machinery. Yeah. Well, and if you have it, we could go over it now. Yeah, Jason, no do you know the lifespan of each one of our I don't. I, I honestly I've don't seen know. it. Sorry, I thought it was on your paper. So nope. that's why I'm like, we won't waste your research. I've seen <laughs> it. And we have, yeah, okay. we have asked the question. I just don't have it right here. Okay. But I can send it in an email right away. I'm just curious if it's easier to stagger these purchases, if there's different type um, use for each one or... Um, we're just purchasing them all at once and going into the future. I think as the council has related back to staff, it would be good for us to stagger them on the back end, meaning as we build out the C CIP every year. And we talked about setting aside funds for each of the purchases every year. I think that's where you would do the staggering is on the so so in other words, we would say, and this is just going to be an example, the Toro 303010 or 3310 is a five-year life and so then we would put into the cip program that we'd be ready to purchase that after five years the next one the 4600 let's say that's a 15-year life we'd stagger that in on the back end if that makes sense so from our from our um direction from the council that we're not going to do these based on uh, when we have the money we're going to build them into our budget over time that's how we would do the staggering i think sir Unless you dirt, unless you as a council direct different. Okay. No other questions? I don't see any others online. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so
So we will now go to our new business, which is Mr. Lehman application S12-2022. Thank you, Mayor Council. <clears throat> uh, this application is a request from Fred Cox, who is representing Mr. Moody, uh, the property owner here. The property is located at 6780 West and on the north side of the SR-201 North Frontage Road. The property is approximately 10 acres in size. Right now, uh, the business is a um, asphalt paving materials business. And so it just, uh, the business has been in place for a while. Um, Mr. Moody has a property in behind this uh, building and would like an opportunity to create eight additional lots for businesses that may want to locate and stay in West Valley City on not large tracts of land. Uh, these properties range from about 11,000 square feet up to 130,000 square feet. So there's a wide variety of properties that are available for businesses. This is looking from the southeast corner. So where you see the utility boxes uh, right here will be the new entrance onto SR201 Brundage Road. And then the last illustration is the subdivision itself. So the proposal here, uh, lot one, the largest lot will continue to house uh, the existing business. And then the new lots in and behind will be available for purchase. Uh, this property does have a private street uh, which the city ordinance does allow in manufacturing zones. We really tried to, to do a dedicated right-of-way here. However, the, the property width just doesn't accommodate a dedicated right-of-way getting the curve um, that we needed. So it really obliterated lots two and three of the subdivision and left a large chunk of land on the southeast portion of the subdivision in this area here, really unusable. So the developer opted to go with a private Right of way uh, that we'll have just a simple drive approach at 201. So that is our report. Okay, thank you. I guess there would have to be a, a you know a property owners association for the upkeep of the road. Correct. Uh, the way that the subdivision is designed uh, and a note that will be placed on the subdivision plat is that those owners will all have responsibility for maintenance of the, the drive in a common ownership situation. <laughs> Another question, sure. sorry, I just blurted out the other one, but um, oftentimes these approvals are routine. Um, we're just checking a box and they've satisfied all of the requirements and really we couldn't vote to not approve it. Correct. Without running into some serious speakers. Yes, this is administrative action. Um, uh, it meets all of our provisions in the manufacturing zone. We don't have a particular lot size requirement. So they they really check all the boxes without any issues from staff. Well, if the other lots have landscaping similar to lot one, I think it'd be great. Yeah, each one of those will go through a site plan review with staff and we'll ensure that the ordinances in the manufacturing zone are complied with. So there's kind of a little knuckle on that southeast exit is that just for a turning radius or yeah so that does look a little bit odd i believe the mayor's talking about this section right yeah. here so uh, in talking with an engineering we wanted <clears throat> excuse me at least a two car stacking and so we want to we want traffic to intersect at a as perpendicular to that right away as we can get otherwise people would be looking over their shoulder to see traffic coming this way. That little dip allows them to front, so they're just simply looking normal as you would at an intersection. Had it been a city right-of-way, that right-of-way would have extended well in a couple hundred feet into those lots, which once again would have diminished the ability to for Mr. Moody to plot what he wanted to do. So it's going out onto the frontage road? It is, yes. Okay, 4201. Okay, so whoever's in control of that road is fine with it? Yeah, so actually the city uh, will be doing a project uh, in the near future. I don't know how far down that road that is. We will be doing a delay agreement for the improvements here. So the city will actually be going in and installing, uh, improving uh, the North Frontage Road 
And so we are working in conjunction with Mr. Cox and the architect engineers to make sure everything falls in line with our project. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go to our consent agenda. Um, I had one question. I was looking for the bios on all these reappointments. I guess it's not necessary because we all were able to read those at the beginning, but would anyone like the bios in the future attached to these reappointments or are you good with how they are? You would like a bio? I'm okay with them not necessarily being attached as long as there's a convenient place that we can click to see them. And if there isn't a central place for those, then yeah, that would be cool to have them attached. Okay. And we'll say yes. Bio. I okay. noticed on the short bio on Josh Pedersen, it was a little outdated just because I know him personally. Personally. Okay. Well, and there are members of the council that are new since the bios were put on when they were originally appointed too. So, okay, let's do that in the future. Okay, so I'll send it or pass it over to Ms. Ottle. Did you have any that you think need explaining or are they no, all I pretty think routine? I they're all great unless the council has questions. Yep, okay. all very routine. Does anyone have any questions on a particular item? A through O. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll now turn the time over to Don Flores for our city man manager hiring process. All right, mayor and council, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the Time to go over this with you. Oh. All right, so we have up here, um, what we've put together is a recommendation uh, to handle this hiring process. Uh, and before I uh, go through this and, and explain and answer any questions, um, we, I think you all are aware of the complexity of this position and what our need is and, and how important this is. We are the second largest city in the state and this position in, entails a lot. And to identify the, the best candidate for this position, we uh, have put together this recommendation to which we believe will allow us to achieve that. So uh, what we've what we recommend is that we utilize the services of an executive recruitment firm, and we will work hand in hand with them through a, an entire process, um, which uh, throughout the process, um, we can provide our own input and, and they're very flexible in how we design that process. And uh, they will help meet our needs and, and ensure that that, that happens. Um, <clears throat> So I will go through this briefly and explain a little bit of the details in each step, how that works, um, why that step is necessary, um, why we are anticipating this length of time and allow you to ask any questions. I can clarify anything as we go. So uh, really the, uh, as, as you can see, we're anticipating a six month process could, could go up to nine months, depending on how different things play out and uh, just the time it takes to identify the best person. Uh, so the first uh, step that we have is really selecting a firm. Uh, we're anticipating four to six weeks. And the biggest reason for that is we've already contacted four or five firms. We're waiting to hear back from four, four or five others. And a lot of them are 30 to 45 days out from even starting with a new client. Uh, so we're, we're kind of already putting that into play. And uh, to me, what that means is just once we make a decision, we need to get going uh, sooner than later. So we will look at different firms. Um, 
see how quickly they can get started with us. We will assess them uh, depending on the decision you guys make to make sure they can meet our needs and, and provide us what we're looking for. Uh, once we get started, we will have an initial meeting with them to review qualifications, job requirements, uh, any screening questions we have for candidates and kind of what our, our expectations are so that they understand what work needs to be done. Uh, we anticipate that'll take about a week. It's really just a, a quick meeting to get things started. They will host the position and this is this step entails a lot of the reason why we would utilize this service and this process. Uh, they will do a lot of outreach. Uh, they have they will have an existing pool of candidates that they can directly reach out to, as well as they will have a national reach um, where they can post the job and get get our job posting out through through different areas that we don't normally utilize and, and we don't normally have that outreach uh, like they would. Uh, they will also work with us to post internally and through all of our channels that we normally use so that we're reaching out locally as well as nationally. Uh, they will handle all communications with candidates. They will uh, work through that process with their team and their all of their resources to uh, identify a, a pool of qualified uh, candidates that um, we can move forward with. Uh, throughout all of that, they regular, regularly communicate with us, give us updates, let us know where things are at. Are at. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that we don't just hand it to them and, and let them take it. We're, we're very involved in that process. Um, the reason we say four plus weeks there is we may hit a point in four weeks and say we want to leave it open longer, we want more candidates, and we can do that if we choose to. So we we anticipate that taking at least four weeks, but it could take longer depending on where we're at. After that, uh, this firm will uh, they'll go through a vetting and review process. Uh, they will screen out applicants based on standards and expectations we have. They will um, review them to identify any red flags that may come up so that we can identify who we want to move forward. Uh, they will also do an initial set of interviews so that they can identify the top candidates of that group. And again, that, that step can be flexible based on what we want and we will determine that with them. Uh, from there, they will provide us a group of top candidates that um, we can request what we want if we say we want the top five candidates, seven candidates, two candidates, um, but they will provide that to us. And from there, we will have the opportunity to interview them, assess them, um, and we can design that and set that up how we want. Um, we will go through that process. And really from there, we will identify our top candidates and move to give job offers, do background investigations, um, and dig into these candidates however we need. Um, they will also have a background investigation service we can utilize to um, identify any, any reasons why we may not want to move forward with a candidate. And then uh, we hit the step of, of discussing and um, voting and selecting a, a final candidate. And then the last step, um, provided, give a job offer. There may be some negotiation that needs to occur and identifying a, a start date between us and that candidate when they can be here and, and start working. So again, briefly, that's, that's our process. Um, so I wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like, as well as an idea of a time frame. Uh, so are, do you, any of you have any questions on any parts of that or anything else I can talk about further, clarify? Any questions from the council? Where are these particular <laughs> recruitment firms located? Uh, really all over. Uh, so we've got a list of nationally recognized, um, firms that, uh, and, and many of them, which we will 
definitely go for. They they specialize in city manager recruiting. They've got experience in it. They do it all the time. And uh, they've got the resources and, and professionalism to support what we need. The concern I have is that Utah and West Valley City has a, a little different culture and climate than many of the Eastern cities mm -hmm. where they might be more aware of what's going on back, back east rather than right. out here where we're just a little different. And would they have that background to be able to? Right, um, and I, I think that's why it's, uh, it's necessary that we have an opportunity through this process to review those candidates and assess them and ask them questions so we can determine if they're a good fit here and what we're looking for. Okay, seeing no other questions, thank you. Yep. This was a really thank good you. layout and I'm good. I'm sorry, I'm late with my question now. Okay. Yeah. What's the trigger that we have to pull to get this ball rolling? Or is this the process that, that the council wants to follow? Um, I don't know that everybody can absorb it right now and say yay or nay, but, yeah, but, but for right have. now, yeah. I think we need to get with our attorney and start on the contract process too, because I think we have to have that in place to know I think we well, need how to, get, to put this in, you know, yeah, what these people will be dealing with. We need to get it going, though, because as he says, it takes six to nine months. Right. So how yep. much time do you do you need? I think if we just looked at it this week and then came back, I'm happy that you've already started looking at recruitment firms. I think it'd be great to bring them to the council and have them review them and see if there's any they like more than another. So I think that process already being started is great. And then, um, but I think we need to start there. And then I think the rest looks good, but I just, that's just my over the top. I don't know if everybody else needs to absorb. I would rather give everybody a week to look at it and research, but I haven't done the math to know how many weeks this really totals up to, so. Having been involved in a couple of searches for state superintendents of education, we need to get going sooner than later because it does take as long as they say, six to nine months. And you don't want to ship flying without leadership. Right. Well, it's been nice to have been able to have a little bit of overlap just for transition purposes, but it doesn't look like that's yeah. So I think they've already started the process to look for a firm and then it can bring those to us. And we have not used an outside firm in the past. We generally don't. I believe there have been a couple positions that we felt the need to. Um, Do you remember what both were? I believe uh, when we hired Sam Johnson, we utilized a firm and mm -hmm. really for the same reasons, it's not a position we normally fill that normally fill um, and so we we just wanted some extra resources to help identify somebody more specialized, yep. a more specialized yep. firm. Yeah. So I think if we keep moving on that and then just review this next week in case anybody else had questions or wanted to adjust anything here. But with two of them not here, I can't see heads nodding or anything else. So. Okay. Um, are you proposing that we get a. Sorry, Jake, go ahead. Yeah. Um, is it being proposed then that uh, we prov be provided with like the top two uh, firms that are currently being uh, considered uh, so that we can mull over those uh, in the next week or where are we going to meet next week to hear more about those firms? Yeah, I don't think it would hurt to see all the firms you're looking at. Yeah, we, we can definitely do that. Um, and we can just provide you real I mean the things we are going to look at and and be concerned about is is timeline right. you know if they say we can't start for 60 days that that might be difficult for us uh, but we can provide you the ones we're looking at and really the the items we're looking at to analyze those firms and give you those details okay 
I think that'd be a great start. Would you like that in a, <clears throat> in a study session discussion scenario or would you like that by email? What's the council's preference on that, ma'am? I would like to have, I mean, getting emails at 408 and 330 don't really work for me. So if we could have an email by the Thursday before the Tuesday, we're gonna speak about it. Okay. And so if they if we don't have it by Thursday, we'll just push it off to the next week. Great. Okay. So we can't keep pushing it off till the next week. That's why I'm saying right. I'm but, ready to pull the trigger and say, let's go with this. Right, but they need to get us the information. We could ask them to speak of the what, process. What national recruiting firms do you know? Mm -hmm. None. That's why they're going to give us the information and we'll so choose from that. They know the information and they're professionals in, in HR. I'm not. I didn't know the recruiting firms that were working on these state superintendents either. But I knew from their reputation with the national associations that they were good firms. We didn't have to get a weekly report from that firm as to what was going on. Well, if we just get the initial and then we can all look at them, I think we all need to go in educated, not blind. And it just doesn't seem right for us not to go in informed. So I don't think we're asking too much to just have information about each firm and then but I, talk about I it here. the selection of the firm up to HR, not to us. Well, this process is our process, so. I think we need to go into it informed and educated and not just blind. So you're proposing that next week we, we have the information about the firms. We look at this process again and decide if that's the process mm -hmm. we want to follow. Yep. Just make sure everybody's comfortable with this and give them more than five minutes to look at it before saying, Shoot, you know, pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Right. Can, I, can yeah. I clarify that, Mayor, just to make sure? sure. So if we if we want an email and the discussion, then I would just ask John, if we're going to get an email to the council by Thursday or really by Wednesday at noon, yep. we might need another week, or do you think you could have that stuff available by Thursday that we could push out to the council? I think we may be able to have it ready by Thursday. Okay. Yep. And with this, the schedule, you'll kind of know what we want as we go anyway. You're correct. You get her prepared. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So that, because this is just the initial. I wasn't planning on, you know, having the details till the very, very end today. It's just a really good starting point. And I think if we start next week with the firms, then we can move forward. And then if anybody has questions or concerns with this, they'll have time to study it. Because that's kind of the purpose. We study today, look at it next week. So everybody has the appropriate amount of time. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is a great format. I appreciate the detail. All right. Council calendar. Did anybody have any questions on this one? Okay. I can see Jake now. Shake head no. Um, potential future agenda items. Yeah, I have a couple of them there. Okay. Yeah, you say that. Um, the first one I just want to say what you are and I didn't make myself clear last week uh, regarding the rental property. One of my uh, uh, people of my district, uh, me, uh, his name is uh, Johnny Anderson, uh, to ask me about his situation about his son. He has a house in, in uh, West Valley City. Um, so maybe I didn't make myself clear. Maybe people here in this room, they thought maybe that I did it for myself or something. I put myself above other people. That's not true. Um, to make that clear, uh, I applied it for Johnny Anderson. Okay. Um, the, sec the second one is uh, we are delaying of a primary uh, right now and also general until primary can be until September 5th and the uh, general gonna be November 21st, I believe, is that right? So how that work with the a new government if we, we propose to do something? Oh, do those have new, is that yeah. what you're asking if yeah. they have new deadlines? New deadline. Uh -huh. Do those deadlines change? You get, those would be adjusted. Okay. And you, you would send an email out to us? If the council would like, I can do that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. 
Anybody else? We received an email about the, the question I brought up last week about um, we have an exemption for a business license if the if their income is is less than two thousand dollars. Correct. The staff recommended that we just keep it at at two thousand. But if we do want to match inflation, it'd be about forty one hundred. Um, any any of your thoughts on this? I'm I'm not sure whether we should just keep it. I'm fine with keeping it just because of the impact on the neighbors. Right. And I know it's hard if they're making each item is a thousand dollars rather than whatever they're selling is one dollar. Yeah. But I think for the neighborhood, we need to be cautionary. Did you have something? No. Okay, just reposition. <laughs> yeah, and all we now everybody faces the same business license restriction. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have to get a business license. Everybody or every home occupation should have to. Right. Oh, you're saying no matter what how much they make, they should have a well no business license? Two thousand. Oh, okay. Same exemption. The way okay. it is now, uh, we have what, one one person who has a problem getting a license to do his hobby. Well, everybody has that same problem getting a license if they're doing something that makes money. Okay. That'll be equal for everybody. Okay. It does seem odd that the exemption amount was uh, set or adopted in maybe my junior year of high school a long time ago. <laughs> it was changed because of inflation. Right. And that was you know 30 years ago almost. But the reasons that the staff was not recommending is to reduce complaints from neighbors of home-based businesses. So, seems good reason. Yeah, we've had quite a few people in here saying that there's definitely a detriment to having a home business next to them, some of them. So it's not always peaceful and quiet. Okay, any other comments on this one? So is your recommendation just to leave it the same? I say leave it the same, I guess. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none. I agree with Lars. Okay. Then we'll just leave it be. Council reports. Yes. The audit committee met last week and reviewed the audit of our uh, housing project that the Campbell Court property that we have. And there's a copy of that audit in my box in, in our office if anyone wants to, to um, read some really interesting information. Um, the, the audit was, uh, was very positive that, that our controls are, are in place and that uh, as far as they could tell, that, there were no findings of inappropriate use of the funds. Um, there were some concerns that we had, not on the audit, but on, uh, on the management of that, that property. But it's uh, it's uh, a rental property that the city owns that's low income housing and, uh, and we don't receive any subsidies. So we're, we're kind of subsidizing ourselves this, Low income housing property and and uh, the, it's it's not a good business if, if we were a business for us to be in. So, do you want to explain how we got into this situation? Well, I, I don't really know. I mean, it, it, it was it was too long ago for me to know, 
exactly what happened and how we got into it, but maybe maybe Jim can can explain it much better than I can. I have Lane Morris prepared to do that. He okay. got the history ready. I think he's online, ma'am, if you'd like to do that right now. Sure. Sure. He asked me to talk about it. But it's oh, much. great. No, oh, we can get ready. Yep, yeah, that's great. Come yeah. on up. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't know about the switch. It's okay. It happened on my drive over here. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of handoffs today. Yes. So um, Campbell Core is your name? Oh, Peggy Daniel, I'm the grants administrator. Thank you, sorry. Um, Campbell Court is a property that HUD and West Valley City and Utah Nonprofit um, Housing Corporation went in together, used tax credits to be able to purchase that and to build it. It has a, um, we weren't quite sure on the year because it happened before Lane was here too. So um, 1998, 1999, uh, time frame. Uh, the tax credits go for about 20 years, and so those ran out, and when it did, it converted back to the city. We are also in a, because it's a HUD property and was used with what's called home funds, it um, is, uh, has an affordability period, which is another 20 years. So before we can sell it or anything, we have to have that affordability um, uh, time frame to end, and we're about four years into that. So we have another about 16 years that we have to, to work with this property. Um, let's see. Let me find, sorry, I, he sent me the question, so let me look here with the next question. Um, so that's the background on Campbell Court. Um, so the um, we, we are able to track our um, funds that we put into that. Um, I don't have those breakdowns now, but we can get those for you. But um, we use are using currently um, CDBG funds to work on the maintenance problems that they have. We currently have the a roof project and some garage doors and a leak that we're we'll be working on with them. Uh, with that, um, we kind of put aside roughly about 50,000 to be able to handle the maintenance on that. Um, the Utah Nonprofit Housing Authority, um, they also are furnishing the management besides helping us build them. They are our management for that, that there. So, um, nonprofit? They're basically a nonprofit, yeah. Um, they do have some for-profit side of them too, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it Amber Court or you said Campbell? Campbell. Gerald, uh, Gerald, let's see, Gerald Campbell Court. It's the, uh, did you say Amber Court when you first? No, Campbell well, Court. I don't Campbell. think so. I didn't Campbell mean to. Court. It was Campbell. Yeah. Oh, Campbell. The, yeah, Campbell Court. And are there project, uh, are there Section 8 vouchers project based? With that project? Yes, they are um, almost, I think everyone that's in that facility is on some type of um, voucher. But they're project based, they're not uh, tenant based, or do you know? No, they're, I, I believe they're tenant based on there. So um, each person that comes in has to have their own subsidy. Does the city actually own it or is it the housing authority? You know, we actually own that now. Oh, sorry. West Valley City or West Valley, West Valley City, City Housing Authority? Um, That's what you're asking. Yeah. Is that right? The Housing Authority does not own that. Okay. So, so is that just under the city? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are we locked into this organization for management or can we um, find our own management? We could. Um, we're not locked. I, I'd have to see what the contract actually says, but when the contract runs out, I believe we have the option to. To do that, they've just been, they've been doing that for the last twenty four years. Right. It just it seemed like a big percentage of yeah. of, of the rents that are collected are going to this management. Well, and we're kind of getting behind. We're always coming up short every year, so we're having to they, take monies from other sources. So they do handle the minor maintenance on all of that. So. Yes. So council would like us to look at that we can we yeah can we can that. certainly maybe go yeah. out to bid on yeah, that yeah, yeah get us a report of how much time's left 
Yep. Yeah. Think. And how the contract looks. Yeah, we, we can, can find that. that. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. The, your other question was about similar properties. We do have two other properties that were built in this, with the same um, type with tax credits that revert back to the city. Um, Gerald Wright, which is a senior's, um, just down the road, a senior's one. And then right next to it is um, Willow, Will, uh, Willow Woods, which is a family complex. And they're all low income also. So Gerald Wright is the one right here on? Yes. Yeah. Lancer Way. Yeah. yeah. And then the other, think they're the just right behind each other there. Oh, That's okay. the old Harvey Street. Property. Yeah. So both of those took up Harvey Street? Yes. yes. Okay. One to the north, one to the south. Yeah. Okay. So part of our process to do this was to clean up, uh, disintegrating the neighborhood. Yes. Correct. And use tax credits to put in these low income housing. Yeah. Although this was before my time, yeah. it was just shortly before my time. And that was a very common tool that we used for um, economic, I call it economic development loosely. It's redevelopment really, right. because those, as you'll remember, they were pretty dense yeah. properties, both Harvey Street and the other, and they were in severe severe dire situations dire consequences and so particularly harvey street i know a little more about because it was just finishing up right when i came on um so i did a little project work on that early but it was at the time it was the city's one of the city's tools that they had in their toolkit for redevelopment we, we kind of gauged that around 2003 is that kind of about the time frame you're thinking of so they'll revert back to us in 20 years, which is yep. this year or next year. And yeah, so. Okay, so the developer that built this is called what? Utah? Um, Utah Nonprofit Housing Corporation. So taking all that into consideration, you know, it, it isn't a great business proposal, but what we're saving maybe on 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 the effect to our city overall, it, it might be worth that. I mean, I'm sure we're saving um, just the police calls that, that we used to be going to those neighborhoods. Yeah, but sadly, Harvey Street just moved over to Parkway and Redwood. It didn't leave the city. Correct. Every single one. <laughs> so, hey, any other questions? Hey. Oh, um, oh. not with this, okay. But, okay. but- Thank you so much. In regards to, the, to our meeting with the audit committee, we also approved the, uh, the letters to, to agree with Eddington and Christensen to perform the audits in the next fiscal years. For all of our different organizations that we perform audits on. And you can see the, the letters also in my box. Was there four or five letters of intent? Four or five. I okay, remember. that's why I can't remember either, Mike. <laughs> okay. Yep, Lars did very well running that meeting. It was, they're very on that's top right. of it, and you understand it. So thank you. There was a lot to go through. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have any reports? I attended the West Fest the weekend, and uh, I was able to get there for a little time every day. And they had great crowds, and great program going continually. So I think we need to give kudos to that committee that put that together and carried it off. It was suggested to me that we might reenact or restart an essential peace program that uh, we had in the past and maybe indicate that all those members of the committee are an essential piece of the community for us. Yeah, we could do that with a couple of our committees. What, what is that? It was a program where we honored a specific person or group who have become an essential piece of the community. 
It might be a central piece on a puzzle. Type of thing. I think we've done it up until about four or five years ago. Um, okay. yeah, more, than, than more than four or five. That's I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was there too, and I took my kids there. And it was so crowded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, trying to get a, a ride for them, but they couldn't. <laughs> So long. Um, so my, one of the police officer over there, they came over and asked me a question. I didn't know how to answer me. So maybe the city here can help me out. Um, they asked me, so the budgets right here, the tickets, we're selling the tickets here. Is that belong to the city or belong to, what is that? Yeah, I That's have no the idea. Nonprofit yeah. runs that. Nonprofit. I don't know what their split is or how they cover that cost. You? you mean for the rides? Yeah. Uh, for the, yeah. 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 That's I'd they, have to look at their contract. Yeah. They pay the carnival people a set price, I believe, is how that's right. Steve Vincent explained it in the past. Uh -huh. So it's run by that nonprofit. Okay. And then they pay all the bills and do those contracts with the individual. So yeah. the carnival is just an individual vendor. Okay. Yeah, maybe we have some kind of information from the city to be awesome. And they, they came over, they asked me that question. I said, no idea. It's a no. I can go back to the city and go ask that question. Yeah. Sure, would but you yeah. like a report on West maybe Fest? from the West Fest people? Yeah, here? sure. Yeah. We'll I will that. say they probably the last two or three years, they've really recruited some enthusiastic, hardworking people on that committee. And it has totally turned around. I know the first set of committee after doing it 25, 30 years just got burned out. And I think they had them stay too long. This new is just a new influx of energy and it's really turned it around. So yeah. it was a good move. It was a lot, I don't know about bigger, but it was much more well attended yeah. in the past ones. And I think the word getting out and I think people are just Getting back into real life after COVID. Yeah. And maybe making a bigger effort. But the fireworks were good. Everything was really well done. I didn't hear any complaints. Thought it looked really good. So and the parade went off without a hitch. Correct? I enjoyed it. Did anybody else? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then let Nicole know if you want to be on the float for the other two parades. On the parade, do we? I know we had a, a final insurance cleanup behind everyone as the parade went. What was it? Was a church that did clean up? I, I don't, don't know. know about that, but maybe, I can find yeah, out. Maybe Nancy mentioned. I just was wondering in addition to that, do we ever have someone go through and clean up the route and establish in the city? Like the sweeper sweep the street well, or so what was the problem? Well, kind of embarrassing, but so I handed out flyers with my entry. Okay. And then I heard from somebody, they saw my flyer on the ground. So oh. the last thing I wanted was my picture on the ground. So I went back through and my son-in-law and I went the, the route that afternoon to see if there were any more on the ground. And there was other, I mean, candy and wrappers and we cleaned up what we could, but um, I was just wondering if we send through and it's a crew after the parade. I don't know that that's a routine activity, but as you know, we do have the right of way cleanup crew. So as an after action report here, we can add that to the things to do to do next year. And I'll make sure and pass that along. I don't know that we do that right now, but we do have the capability. So. Well, I got you this year. <laughs> You got an effort. Window? Team effort. <laughs> no, you had bags full. Wow, Thanks that so is quite a bit. And you really think about it. All those top toffees, toffees. They were squished into the ground. <laughs> oh, not just not just empty wrappers because they'd eaten it. Right. Okay. They were squished. I okay. got ran over. Yeah. One more thing about the, uh, the parade. Uh, in the past, we we uh, we had a, a van to pick us up, and then uh, they went to 52nd West, and they go back to the city park is that we're gonna do that in the future, you think, Nicole? 
I'm, not sure. so, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, you mean yeah. after the parade's over yeah, to, to take you back to your booth? Uh, to take you back. Uh, uh, I'm sure we could arrange that as an after action item as well. No problem. Yep. Yeah, that'd, that'd be good. Yeah, some of it just, I just drove my back to the park. I did the same thing. Yeah. I thought it worked well then having two vehicles. So, okay. Anything else? All right. Was anyone, um, have anything on the strategic discussion list they wanted to speak about today? Okay, we will now go to the review of the special redevelopment agency meeting scheduled for next week. I'll turn the time to Ms. Cottle. Hey, ma'am, thank you. This is one of the, one of the funnest topics, I think. Um, as you know, we the state law changed about seven or eight years ago with regards to some redevelopment funds that required a um, low to moderate income housing set aside of each of the redevelopment areas, which resulted in a pretty significant um, fund that is uh, um, very limited in its use. And as we talk today, I think it's a great example of the reason that we wanted to be creative with the use of those funds rather than um, potentially invest in, in additional housing in the more traditional way, additional uh, low to moderate income housing in the traditional way. And in addition to that, back six or seven years ago, the council had given us a strategic goal. Well, actually, it's longer than that. It goes back about 20 years. But we finally cracked the code about six or seven years ago, and that is to improve secondary education levels in the, in the city um, uh, post post um, high school education levels. And as you know, we'd struggled with that goal as an economic development team for many years until we um, came upon the great partner um, that we have in the University of Utah through the Opportunity Scholars Program. So um, as you know, we've been engaged in that project for about six years, maybe headed into seven years. We've had great um, outcomes there. We utilize specifically the um, housing funds and the way that works is we provide those funds in the form of scholarship donation to the Opportunity Scholars folks. Then they take those and they work their magic to make sure that all those funds go to housing of some sort with regards to the students. And they, they make sure that our students that, that we put through, which are um, first generation West Valley City students, that they um, are covered with full scholarships. In addition to that, the Opportunity Scholars Program has a very high rate of graduation, which is nearly unheard of in the whole country. Um, even the very best programs have um, much lower rates of graduation, typically in the 50 and 60 percent. And um, we've been able to facilitate um, a lot of our uh, very own West Valley students through that program. We have today with us Latu, who is the director of the program, and some of our some of our um, leaders as well. And Nate um, Webster is our city liaison to the Opportunity Scholars, and we have some of our very own Opportunity Scholars with us. Everyone smile and wave, <laughs> and thank you for being here. We're so happy to have you, and it is um, it really is a, a great and wonderful, well run well-managed program that has um, had a massive impact over the years. And so we recommend as a staff that we that we do that again. It's $180,000 a year. And for that, Latu and her team maximize as much as they can the number of students. So in other words, $180,000 obviously wouldn't full ride scholarship very many kids when you got right down to it. But what Latu is able to do is take those funds and, and with her synergies, magnify those so that she can get more kids through the other pieces of the puzzle that she has with other funds that, that aren't ours. She combines those and gets the, the, um, the students scholarship. So happy to answer any questions that the council might have. So we provide housing over at these facilities as well. Is that part of the 180 contribution? It is. Okay, it is. Yep. So it's not on top of. Nope, it's part of. That's correct. <clears throat> okay. And about how many students did we have last year? So last year, let's see. Um, this year we've assisted 27. Um, 19 students have graduated from the program with an additional 17 scheduled to graduate this year. Um, we've had 45 of the students over the since the inception that have done internships with businesses in the city um, as well. So looks like we're doing about 27 right now. 
Nice. Yeah, which is great. Okay. Any other questions? Not a question, just uh, a congratulatory uh, message of support. This is a program that um, was has been around since before I've been on the council, but I was uh, floored and really impressed and continue to be uh, in strong support uh, of that work. And congratulations to the scholars and uh, the work that you're doing uh, and to Latu uh, and your team for what you do. And I was on the same flight last night as Tevita, just, just to know Latu, but thank you all for, for the good work. And I, I continue to strongly support. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great program and a great use of money. So, okay, so that'll be on our agenda next week. All right, um, did we have a need for a closed session today? No, ma'am. All right, just one more action item. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Stand adjourned, thank you.